Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel where today it is all about appreciation. Appreciation for the unique, appreciation for the different, appreciation for the bold and experimental. Nine years ago, we got Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015. Something of an overlooked series because, one, it's way kiddier and way brighter than its predecessor, Transformers Prime, which met to such acclaim from the fandom. Uh, even though this was a continuation, it absolutely looked like they turned Prime into a young kid's show, which they kind of did. But also because, well, it's just kind of weird for us veterans to have another Robots in Disguise, you know, like we had that other one. We liked it. Why, why do we need another one? Point being, the series was a standout because of the brand new Decepticons offered up. I often equate them to Mavericks from Mega Man X, where they took the original formula from Mega Man of, you know, Robot Masters, Cut Man, Ice Man, Fire Man, you know, Metal Man, etc., and instead of just making them a generic robot, they made them more akin to animals. So your Iceman was Chill Penguin. You know, your, your Fireman was Flame Mammoth. Gave it a lot more personality and gave them a lot more distinction. And that's exactly what we got from the cast of Decepticons from R.I.D. 2015. You know, like Steeljaw here, you know, who for the most part was the leader for most of the series. I love this design. I, I'm upset that he never really had a really good, satisfying toy because the design is actually sick. Now, when it comes to these bots, he's actually more on the tame side. You know, the animalistic elements are there. You can tell he's a wolf, but he's actually closer to a werewolf because it doesn't really, like, overtake his robot mode styling. But you can see the way that, you know, he's got detail across his forearms that resemble, like, uh, raised fur, like an angry wolf would have. You know, the ears and the, you know, the, the ears and the sides of the helmet, that's obvious. What you don't see in this shot is the tail. He has a tail. In fact, it's the only way to get his warrior class toy to stand up. But the point being, very unique and different, and he's on the mild side of R.I.D. So I thought, let's just go through some of my favorites and some of the ones that I think were, like, the most ambitious. Just for the people who might have picked up on Transformers more recently, you know, along the lines like the Cyberverse and the, uh, the Bumblebee movie pickups, you know, wherever you might have jumped into the fandom. We've never really talked about these Decepticons in mass on this channel before, so here you go, if you overlooked them. Because uh, there are some fantastic designs, like Saberhorn. Now, most of these Decepticons actually don't transform into something based on their animalistic elements, but some of them do. So he does transform into a rhino beetle. But I love the look of him. He has this very regal appearance because the, the wings hang off of him like a cape. The purple really pushes that. The purple and the maroon really pushes the the more regal aspect of it. He kind of looks like an evil Alpha Trion if he were to transform into an insect instead of a, what, lion, space shuttle, what, what, what is he transforming into today? Now, point being, really cool design. Really cool design. Love the colors alone on this guy. But this, this is one you don't think of immediately. He came around later. Uh, how about Thunderhoof? I think everyone kind of gravitated to Thunderhoof immediately. Not only because antlers. We actually have a Transformer based more like on a reindeer or a moose. Um, I've never really understood which one it was. Point being, antlers. <laughs> And it was the fact that he turned into something that we had never had in Transformers before. A farm tractor. Which is, number one, that's a brilliant way of using antlers on a, on a transforming robot. You know, as the harvester, the harvester scoop on the front of the tractor, perfect. That's such a clever idea. But also, yeah, like, it just made him so novel. 
Both of his modes have a lot to love. You know, I, I even like that his feet resemble hooves. You know, they did a great job designing him. And then there's the ones that get even weirder. Let's look at Spring Load. Spring Load is currently in his robot mode. He doesn't transform into a lizard. He is a lizard. Transforms into a truck, if I remember right. Point being... Yo, like, when's the last time you saw a Transformer with no robot mode whatsoever? Like, the mutants from Beast Wars? You know, it's so different, and I like how different it is. Aside from the fact it's just using its elements well for the design, you know? So, like, you know, you, you have the tread pattern on the tongue that helps with the mechanical part of the character. I actually really like that his hind legs, the, one he, the ones he would jump with here... Because he is supposed to be like frog-like. I like that you know, it has the tires at the bottom. So it's like he's bouncing off the rubber tires. That's a really clever design element. I really like things like that worked in. That's clever. Here's Terra Shock based on a bison. Yeah, just again, cool design work. I unfortunately forget what he transforms into. Uh, you will forgive me. Because a lot of these designs, um, I'm a little bit rusty on. I will try to remember. I'll try to remember. But it's such a cool-looking brute of a bot, you know? You know, obviously, when you work a buffalo into your robot mode, you're going to be a bruiser. And I, I do like me a bruiser of a Decepticon. Clamp down. The Crab Man. Crab Man who becomes a car. Uh, yeah, he's just... It's such an odd design, isn't it? It's so weird. It's, it's like arms that go all the way to the ground. Those goofy little floating eyes. You know, the grill of the the grill of the vehicle becoming his teeth and mouth. It's hysterical. Like there, there's something like genuinely like fun about just how weird of a design he is. And again, unique. This is the kind of design, like, if you dropped him anywhere else into Transformers, you know, you'd be looking like a transmutate situation. Just like, what is this? What hurt you? What? You need to go back into the protoform pod for a while. Um, it's, it's, but here in R.I.D., it fits right in. He, you know, it's, it's that weird, weird aesthetic that just kind of works there and only there. It's not to say all of them were especially weird. You know, we have ones like Scowl, who just looks like a really brutish take on a Dinobot, which is he, which he is a Dinobot, a Decepticon one that turns into an Ankylosaurus. We got a Dinobot as an Ankylosaurus in 2015, and he never got a toy. And I wept. Ah, uh, it's such a cool design, too. I like how spiky he looks. He looks like Transformers Doomsday. Doesn't he? With the, like, rocky protrusions coming out all over him? He looks so cool. He looks so cool. No toy representation whatsoever. Bums me out. He even conforms to the Dinobot thing of having an S name. And we still don't have a toy of Scowl. Upsetting. How about... How about another... No robot mode. I think Underbite works better than a lot of them. He's kind of like a Cybertronian car, if I remember his vehicle right, because he actually got a transforming toy. And it's not a bad one either. It's kind of fun. But again, super odd designs. You know, he's you know he's very dog-like. And again, no robot mode, which really thematically when you're dealing in a cartoon show gives you so many different options for like fight scenes, choreography, you know, like little like chase like like adventures like chasing down one of these four-legged decepticons must be a nightmare but you know what these are actually kind of rare and I, i'm kind of upset by that because they stand out the most they stand out so much unless you're hammer strike where you're literally just a shark with legs Potentially one of the most terrifying things you could possibly run into is just a shark that has gotten up out of the ground and is now running at you. He's absurd. He's absolutely absurd. He turns into a boat, so he's nothing like terribly like 
creative as far as like what he transforms into based on his uh, robot mode. But yeah, does like that robot mode does not look like any traditional transformer. He looks like you only half transform Skybite. You know, he looks like a broken cyber shark. You know, name you know name your equivalent because you don't have anything that looks like that. I don't think he got anything besides like a little figurine either. They didn't make anything that transforms out of uh, Hammer Strike. Shame. Shame. I hate that these toys, these characters, were released in an era where not every single thing in the show actually got a toy, where they were very selective about who got a figure and who didn't. Here's another one I would have loved a toy of, even though it would have been really hard to engineer for a budgeted line like this. Chop Shop. I love the design on this Chop Shop. He looks absolutely wicked. And the unique thing about this Chop Shop is he's a combiner of his own, of himself. He dis his transformation is a small swarm of five insects. That's creepy. That's creepy. Also, extremely unique. I don't think with the budgets R.I.D. had, they would ever be able to have actually produced this. I don't think even with the Generations budget at the time, they would have been able to produce this. But I would have loved for them to have tried. I would love for them to have tried. It would have been so cool. Pop an arm off, turns into a beetle. Pop this arm off, turns into a beetle. You know, you just have a small swarm of them. You know, you, you like you 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 just buy like three of them. You buy three of them, and you have like literally an entire swarm to just mess with and cover Autobots with. It would have been so good. Would have had so there would have been so many people taking photos of like like troop built chop shops all in the, like insect modes. Oh, it would have been so creepy. But it would have been really cool footage. Uh, since we're on bugs, kickback. No, he's not in his beast mode right now. Kickback is an actual uh, is an actual robot based on a grasshopper. The genius part here is he turns into a dragster. So that gigantic backside that that uh, I can never remember bug part names. Excuse me. I'm gonna say thorax and go move along. That big piece the, the the front of the the dragster becoming that piece of the bug is genius design work absolutely genius design work again it's such a different type of bot it looks so unique and again no toy Oof, god there's so many missed opportunities in this series uh, let's move on to one who did get a toy and if you know R.I.D., this is the one, this is the boy, the one you've been waiting on. It's Bisque. It's a lobster man named after Soup. Uh, he actually did get a toy, and actually a pretty good one, too. Like, even his repaint character in the cartoon got a toy, uh, which is great. Thermidor, I believe the name was. Uh, and it's a nice little, like, roadster-type car, too. Like, it's actually a nice transformation. Uh, it's a very nice car to turn into this weird of a Decepticon with his eyes going in different directions, big, long antenna. But there's so much character to this. You know, like, when you look at the overall design, like, you get the same vibes of, like, Beast Wars Scorponog, right? Like, how many different bots that have used claws for hands? But this guy somehow just radiates. He shines. Like, he just has so much more character than a lot of those takes. And I I like him for the same reason everyone else likes him. He's weird, he's offbeat, and he looks really, really good. And he goes great with melted butter. Again, good example of what you could have done. Because he got toys, and others didn't. Like Ziza. This is a really cute idea. Uh, in robot mode, she's designed after a queen. Which means it's no real surprise when her transformation is a bee. You know, uh, Ziza. You know, because buzzing. I know, it sounds like you mistyped pizza. Don't get me wrong. It's making me hungry because I didn't eat much today. But again, I think that's an incredibly clever way of working it around. I think that's a really cool way of making that design happen. Uh, yeah, just 
a bee that turns into like a queen bee based robot. That's really, really good. Really, really like that. No toy. Back to someone who did get a toy. I'm going back and forth here toward the end of the video. Quillfire, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He looks like if you fed Sonic the Hedgehog the T-Virus. He is menacing. Like, it's such a cool look for a, for a Decepticon. You know, he's, you know, he's got more of a stout appearance to him with his body lower on the torso and his stubby little legs. Um, but the claws, the menacing jaw, the, the, the spines. It's all about the spines here. He looks so good. It's such a wicked design. I'm so happy Quillfire actually got a toy, and it's actually not a bad toy at all. Yeah, like, the, you know, it's it's nice to see. It's nice to see that like some of the really cool design work did get a little bit of recognition. But then again, some of the favorites got no love whatsoever. Um, this is Ped. And Ped's design is absolutely wicked and brutal, and I love it. I'm not even sure what animal he's trying to imitate, because he's got kind of like the, the, the... He kind of has the appearance of, like, a, a piranha around the mouth, but then he's got tusks, and I'm not sure where the tusks come from. I also don't know where the, the blades come from. Like, I would start equating him to, like, a warthog or something, but he doesn't have any kind of pig snout to him. So, I have no idea what animal he's actually based on. I don't care. This is one of the coolest, most menacing Decepticon designs I've ever seen. And his name is Ped. Which, from what I have researched, is a sediment in the ground. Dirt. He's named after dirt. He got no toys. He's named after dirt. But, oh my god, does he look cool. He turns into, like, a full semi, too. Like, this was a brutal beast of a bot. Love it. Love it. And there's so many more I could do. Like, I didn't even throw in Filch, who's usually my go-to for this. But, you know, admittedly, she's more of a standard Decepticon, like, robot design. Uh, I wanted to focus on the more animalistic, the more interesting ones. So, that's the list you got. The unfortunate thing about R.I.D. 2015 is that because established characters and established villains pulling in fans, etc., etc., eventually we went back to the status quo. And, you know, when they went to just normal Decepticons again, like, they're cool designs. You know, this sound wave hits, you know, notes from Prime and G1 in a really well-balanced way. But it really did feel like we escaped the thing that made the Decepticons in the series stand out so much. I feel so bad that this is where they kicked off the era of splitting the toy lines between just for kids and just for collectors instead of making a unified main line that kids could be into and afford and you know, you know, could be into and were really cool toys for them, but still satisfying for adult collectors too. I understand that's a budget crunch thing, but man, man, does it suck. I mean, I really hate to see that that it went down like that. Because there's some really good design work in here. There's some I would really still love to have good toys for, but I feel like because a lot of these were only one episode characters, you're never going to get the chance to get them as good toys. You might get Steeljaw someday, maybe a Thunderhoof, but that might be it. That really might be it out of the entire cast, which is really unfortunate for a lot of really cool designs. So, that's me lamenting. The last era where Hasbro was really daring and really adventurous with the designs of their characters. And then they just kind of went cheap on it. Which is really disappointing. But, that's me venting for the day. Please, by all means, leave something in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite from R.I.D. 2015 was, because it's always different. Everyone has a different favorite from that lineup of Decepticons. So yeah, there's your assignment. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I will see you next time.